start with our skins and we're going to cut those out to match the shape of our blank. I'm using a pair of tent snips here and I'm just simply going to cut a couple of rectangular pieces that are just slightly smaller than the blank that will glue that whole thing together and then later cut it out into the final shape. Once I'm done cutting the skins out, I'm going to install the binding inserts next. So these are the threaded inserts for the bindings and the grab handle. There's some recesses cut into the board so that they should lay flat. Here I'm using a five minute epoxy to glue them in place, uh, but eventually I decided that was more hassle than it was worth and just switched to putting them into the wood directly without any glue. Uh, some epoxy will squeeze in around them as we laminate the skins on and we'll just see how that holds up. In order to keep the epoxy out of the inserts, I'm inserting some plasticine clay in there to keep them clean. Once we're done with the board, I'll open those inserts up with a chamfer bit, and then I'll use a bottoming tap to clear any clay out of them. Before we start slinging any epoxy, we want to get our sealant tape down on the rocker table. At this point, we know there's no glue or any contaminants on the rocker table, and that allows us to get a good seal between the tape and the rocker table and avoid having any problems with leaks uh, due to epoxy getting on there or other foreign debris. Now that we have the rocker table prepared, we're going to glue the skins to the core. The neat part about this process is we can do this as a flat kind of cassette and then drop it into the rocker table and clamp it in place. So I'm using uh, some West system here with Cabasil in it. It's thickened up into a kind of runny putty, maybe about the thickness of mayonnaise. And I'm using a notch spreader to spread that out. The notch spreader will give me a nice even thickness and then it also gives me some grooves to allow air to escape as we press the core down into the skin and then when we do the top side uh, the skin down against the core. Once we have this all glued up we'll move it over to the rocker table and get it clamped in place. All right, we've got our skins glued to the core. One of the things I want to point out though before we vacuum bag this is that we've put a plastic film called rubble wrap over the skins to protect them from glue squeeze out and to protect them from rubbing on them or scratches in the manufacturing process. So we're gonna line this up in the rocker jig. Our rocker jig has a little bit of extra rocker in it because we anticipate some spring back from the poplar core. As you can see there, it bounces a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to place our vacuum bagging material. So we're going to use a release film, we're going to use a breather, and then we're going to have the bag over that. To connect to the bag, we're using a 401C vacuum cup with a quick disconnect uh, release system. So the first layer that we put down is our release film. This just creates an impermeable barrier between the board and our breather material. So any excess squeeze out or anything like that won't get into the breather, won't glue our breather to the board. The next layer that we're putting down is our breather. 
And the breather does what it says it does. It allows the vacuum to be distributed through the whole part even as the film comes down and gets squished, it still has air channels that allow you to get even vacuum and even pressure everywhere. Without the breather, we run the risk of just locking down vacuum around the vacuum cup and not getting it distributed through the whole part. So we've got the breather down and now we're putting down our film. We gotta make sure before we get the film sealed, in place that we've put the bottom part of our 401c cup under there. So we've got that cup under there and now we're just going to seal up the uh, vacuum bag on the tape. In this case we can get away without putting pleats in the vacuum bag. There's a couple reasons for that. It's pretty flat and then we're not doing resin infusion or anything like that so it's okay in this case to use the stretch of the bag to get the part down. There is a good chance we'll need to put at least one little pleat in at a quarter, but maybe not. Now that we have that bag sealed, we can install the upper half of the 401c vacuum cup. We're simply going to make a little slit in the middle of the cup, and then we're going to install the top by pushing it down and turning it a quarter of a turn. After that, we're going to hook up our pump and apply vacuum. So in this case, we are using a rotary vane, an oil bath rotary vane vacuum pump, and it's gonna pull a full atmosphere. So 14.7 PSI. That is more pressure really than we need, uh, but this is a clamping operation, so it's not really gonna hurt us like it would in a wet layup vacuum bag operation. And again, Part of that is because the type of the pump we're using, we really have to pull full vacuum to keep that pump happy. Now that we've got that under vacuum, we're going to let it sit overnight and give time for the glue to cure up. Now that we've given it sufficient time to cure, we're going to remove the vacuum bag and the processing materials and see what we got. In the next video, we'll trim it out and go ride it.